everybody. Welcome to the Fire It Up with CJ Show. We're in part three, talking about Ignite Your Career with Chris Holmes, strategies and tactics to unleash your potential. Unleash your potential is the key part of this. So in the last segment, we were talking about how to resign for a company. In the very first, we were talking about what recruiting firms do. In this segment, I wanted to talk about um, unleashing your potential and strengths and then how to represent that in both your interviews and then your resume. Can you tell me a little bit about what you mean that this is one of your chapters in the book about your strengths? Yeah, um, absolutely. So I am a huge believer in actually I'm living proof of it that when you align your strengths with your job your job doesn't feel like a job it feels like breathing it feels natural it feels like joy and as you and I talked about before the easiest visual for this one is if you think about kids in high school on the mm-hmm. sports team mm-hmm. if somebody is playing a sport where their strengths don't align they're a bench warmer Mm-hmm. You know, they are, you know, they're, they're really not getting any playing time. Mm-hmm. But when they switch to a sport where their strengths align, all of a sudden they're the superstar mm-hmm. and they're knocking the ball out of the park. And that's the exact same what thing that happens with strengths. And my example is when I was in brand marketing, I was good. And there were parts of my job I was great at, and there were parts, CJ, that were that were a struggle. And I got through, but I had to work, I think, five times harder mm-hmm. than anybody else at those parts. And when my company was sold and I called my favorite recruiter, Brian, and said, get me a job in St. Louis, and he threw out, come work for me, and I decided to do it. From day one, when I picked up the phone and started calling people, it's like, this is easy. You know, I'm talking to people. I'm getting to know them. I'm, I'm telling them about jobs. I'm helping them think about their careers, and it was so natural and so easy. And I started making placement after placement, and truthfully, I started making a lot of money. And I felt guilty because I'm like, this, this is people get paid to do this. That's what yeah, I'm doing with coaching. Crazy. I'm like, really? I've been doing this all my life for free. Now right. people are actually going to pay me to do this? Oh, my goodness. So that's, <laughs> I know that's the feeling. what happens when you align your strengths and your job. Okay. And, and what's the yeah. process? And it sounds like this is something that you're stepping through pe- with people right now with your firm. What's right. the process that you use in doing that? I mean, there's so many strength assessments, but what do you use personally and that you find that's the, st- the best way to identify these strengths? Yeah, so there are a couple of different ways because we work with a variety of people. We work with college kids mm-hmm. all the way to like chief marketing officers. Mm-hmm. And so for the college kids, we'll say, go talk to your professors as a starting point. Go talk to your friends. Go talk to your coaches mm-hmm. and ask them as a starting point. For the people already in industry, we'll ask them, tell them, go talk to the people you've worked with in the past mm-hmm. and ask them. So that's one benchmarking. Mm-hmm. Then we, I also have people sit down and write, just brainstorm. What do I love doing? What do I hate doing? Mm-hmm. Two pieces of paper, then hone it down to the top 10 for each. Mm-hmm. And that kind of gives you a really clear roadmap of what do I want and what don't I want in my next job. Mm-hmm. And then the third thing is, like you said, assessments. And there are two that I really like. One is strength finders. Mm-hmm. And then the other one is one called U Science, Y O U Science. Hmm, I've never heard of and that one. U Science is really different and interesting. It mm-hmm. has you take uh, play like eight, no, nine eight minute computer games. Wow, okay. And from there, it maps how your brain is wired. Mm. And it comes out, so we're strength finders, you say, I like this more than this. It's your assumption of what you like. You science is how your brain works. <laughs> That's fascinating. And so if you take the two of them, it gives you a really good insight yeah. into what sort of, like what your strengths are and then what sort of fields and jobs right. will be set up for strength. Uh, okay, so just the... The U science, I know that Strength Finder doesn't necessarily, as I recall, doesn't necessarily give you the fields. Um, some of the other ones do. I think Cliff, I can't remember the one of the other ones. But so, so will you actually get like specific industry and job titles from U, U Finder? Yeah. 
Wow. Yeah, from okay, good. Science, you science yeah. rather. Wow. Yes. Great. Okay. Got it. So you can take that and then say, okay, I should be moving from Amazon over to consumer products. Cause I actually just love products or whatever in, in marketing. So then, yeah. so then, then I start working with you guys to actually figure out, well, what is, what, how does that translate to titles and positions? And then how do I recraft my resume to pivot it so that I'm actually putting, you know, the right kinds of ideas in the, the you were talking about the tree in the first segment, like we, what are our right. foundational skills that are transferable from right. Amazon moving to consumer products and the, uh, like a, a Kellogg or whatever. So right. what are some, um, some of the things with resumes right now that I've noticed is that, um, so for my son who's in college, who just actually yeah. is applying from jobs, they take your resume, they strip it down, they throw it into something else. And like, what's happening to our resumes? It's no longer the resume as I understood it to be. Um, what is happening with, with resumes um, nowadays? And how, as an applicant, can I make mine stand out? So it's really interesting because um, <laughs> it's funny. My 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 kids. I have three kids, two who are in business school actually, and one who's in college, and, and they're ignoring their career centers' advice and just going by ours. Because I still believe that resumes should be clear. They should be concise. They should be very easy to read. They should say who you are where you've worked, what your titles are, what you've done, and what you've delivered. Mm -hmm. They should not be fancy. They should not, you know, they shouldn't have pictures. They shouldn't have weird stuff. Purple graphics or whatever. Yeah, all of that stuff just gets in the way. Okay. Somebody spends, I mean, really and truly, if you get a person to look at a resume, you probably know this, eight seconds Right. is what the typical... So they've got to be able to glean the key stuff that wants them to spend more time on it. Right. It seems um, like for a lot of them, though, they're just scanning for keywords. Um, do they have well, SEO experiences? Do they have whatever? Social media. I'm not sure what it is that they're, they're looking for. But are they just scan like pulling out the call, calling it for key facts? And how can you make sure your resume includes that? Or should you even be playing this game? Well, and that's a great question because one of the things we're going to talk about is how best to apply. And I think posting online is like playing craps. It mm. is the lowest odds. So if you can't get in any other way, then yes, you post online. But yeah, you do stack the cards by putting, you know, all those things that you've done that the job calls for because they do use these act app, you know, these ATT systems and all these other things where it's computer generated. Right. And it doesn't even get to a person until it culls through that thousand resumes to pull out the 50 that have those points. So, okay. yes. So, so trying to go into like, I'm in link, oh, oh, this job at Kellogg looks really good for um, a product marketing job. I'm going to apply and like the likelihood of my LinkedIn profile meeting the ATT that Kellogg has is like, you know, just like the stars aligning, like that's just seems super unlikely from yes. my perspective, unless you like jam it with keywords and whether the exact same keywords that Kellogg wants for right. brand management, which may be different than another position I'm looking at for relationship management. And those are two different keywords. So how can I put both of them on LinkedIn? It just seems so unlikely. So, so a great example, I've done a bunch of presentations at Kellogg Business School, mm -hmm. um, and uh, one of it was on how best to apply, and a great example is uh, the head of the Career Center was talking about he needed to hire somebody, and so he was working with somebody else, and, and they went over the first slate of 20 people, and he said, okay, these two are good, let's, let's call them in, and the guy said, what about the other 20? And he said, what do you mean the other 20? He said, the other 20 pages. And the guy was like, oh, hell no, I'm not going through another 20 pages. <laughs> and so they looked at those two people, plus they had another five people that were networked in, and those were the seven people they looked at. Oh, my god! So networking is so much better than applying online. And, that, um, and what is networking? Because it means different things to different people now. Like in, in the tech world, 
A network is to ask someone you know to give you your referral. And even within the referral world, it means different things. Like if you okay. give a referral at Amazon, it depends on whether it's a tech person giving you a referral or a marketing person. And then I've asked people at Amazon and Google, and they're like, we have no idea how this referral thing works. Even people who work there, they have no idea. So, and I have no idea if this is, I know for tech companies in Seattle, they're doing that. But what are other companies doing this referral or what is networking now in other fields? Okay, so networking overall is something that I think people should be doing every day, at, at least every week. Okay. And it has nothing to do with getting a job. It has to do with, again, your foundation. And mm. you should be doing it with people from your high school, your college, family and friends, people you've worked with in the past. And it's because you can today so much more than you could when I graduated. Because as you said, I'm 100 years old. Um, <laughs> Me too. I'm 100 and at least 100. No. Um, but, but staying in con contact and building your network and, and your contacts within your industry mm -hmm. is so important. Mm -hmm. And getting to know people and asking about their journey and asking advice from them and all those things. That is what networking is. Mm. Making now, friends. Isn't it called just being friends with someone? <laughs> but being, being business friends. Uh, okay, got it. Being business friends where you're learning from them and you're asking what you can do for them mm. and staying in contact with them. And then if a job comes open at their company, you're not calling them out of the blue mm. and saying, hey, CJ, can you get me in? You're calling them and saying, hey, CJ, we talked a couple months ago and I saw this job came open. Do you know anything about it? Because mm -hmm. I think my background aligns. What do you think? Got it. Got it. So it's really important. The other thing you can do for networking is on LinkedIn, you know, like look at your feed. And when you see things you like, like them. When you comment on them, and if you really like them, share them with your network and comment on it, mm. and then message the person who wrote it and say, hey, I really like what you wrote. It mm. really resonated. Would you be willing to spend 10 minutes with a junior person in your industry? I'd love to hear about your journey. And oh, that's, that's a great find, idea. That's how you find mentors, and that's how you find people who are going to share their wisdom with you. So I'm a mm. huge believer in that as well. Mm -hmm. Okay, got it. So that's how you build networks. And then yeah. what about all this referral stuff? Is that happening in other industries? And how does it even work? So it, it does in many industries. And I will tell you if, and, and if um, what, what it is, and what I think you're talking about is if you refer somebody who you know to HR and that person gets hired, you're going to get paid something right. by your company. But if that person is already applied online, you won't get paid a penny. Oh, I didn't realize that. Yes. So that's another reason people should not apply online until they network with you. Or even better, the, most, the best way to get it is call that trusted recruiter and say, hey, are you working on this job? Because if they're working on it, the client wants them to hire, to, to fill it. Mm. Or say, or do you know senior leadership? Because I know CEOs and C CMOs at almost all the marketing companies out there. And if I know them really well, I can send their resume directly to that person. Uh, say, okay, here's got it. a superstar you want to talk to for this role. Uh, interesting. Versus going through the HR screen or trying to get in through that black hole of online. Got it. Interesting. So, okay, got it. So this is how networking works with a recruiter. And just generally speaking, I had no idea. All yeah. the stuff in the background, you just don't know unless yeah. you're in the field, of which I'm not right. in that level of the field. Interesting. Right. Okay, so how to effectively apply is to talk to your recruiter if you have one. If you don't, go yeah. to Pinnacle, find a recruiter in your industry. Um, yeah. ask, if you don't have that, then go to some of your friends, ask them who are some good recruiters, and then basically try to go from the inside into these rep because, I mean, that's shocking that there's 20 pages of Isn't applicants. That, crazy? And that is crazy. 50 now, if you think about it. Now, with everything going on with COVID and everything else, 
Yeah, it's yeah, like it's crazy. Quadruple. Okay, so um, I think we've actually talked about applying, writing the resume. In the last segment, I want to talk about how to prepare for the interviews because that's always a really tricky one. We have been talking yeah. to Chris Holmes and we've been doing a very, very high level look at um, the many chapters that she has in her book all about these topics. We've been talking to Chris Holmes about Ignite Your Career Strategies and Tactics to Unleash Your Potential. Thank you so much. 